Hey y'all, Jesse Peterson here with Let's Make Art. I'm a mixed media artist and I love art journaling. Today I have a different project for you. I have a project that we like to call Let's Make Art Matter. I gotta slow down. And I have Michael Cray here, running Hello. the cameras. Um, he's gonna tell me like how to keep things in the shot so you have a great experience and um, just ask questions, be our art cheerleader for today. I can do that. Thanks, good time. Okay, so this is what we're gonna make. And we like to do, um, we like to make art, like to put good vibes out in the world. And we have this program where <clears throat> people can submit names and tell us a little bit about somebody and we can um, send them art. So this month we have Judy. Um, Judy is known as a mountain woman and a mentor that loves art and history. She is a lifelong learner and an inspiration to all who know her. When Judy moved down from the mountains 10 years ago, she became more isolated. She broke her hip and is now living in an assisted living facility. With COVID restricting her to her room, she's truly alone with no children, no computer, and um, her younger sister passing away. Let's remind Judy of the independent, feisty, art, and history-loving woman that she is with some postcards. I'm so excited. That's so sweet. <laughs> so uh, we ha this theme that we've been working in in March is all about roots and relics and having fun with old photos. And so I thought Judy might enjoy um, seeing an old photo kind of um, illustrated in a fun way. And you can follow along with this project and make this, or you can make whatever you want for Judy. There's no rules here. So let's get started. We are going to use our postcard. Oh, and the one thing that you should know about the Let's Make Art Matter um, program, if you are a Let's Make Art subscriber you have a postcard in the box already addressed and it has a stamp on it if you want to do this and you don't have that you can totally contact our customer happiness team at hello let's make art and they will give you the address did i say that right, the, yeah, right? okay all right so we are going to use our dilutions paint um, we have vibrant turquoise lemon zest and white linen and we'll use some gel medium as well I'm going to use an X-Acto to cut things out. It might be nice to have a ruler as well to keep your edges straight if you want, or you can use a pair of scissors. And I'm going to use this round eight brush. That is what we're gonna do. It's okay. so funny, I usually film Sarah and I only hear round two and round six. <laughs> it sounds weird to my ears to hear round eight. Round eight, what's this? Yeah, and this, this is a mixed media brush. So if you are a watercolor, um, artists and you're joining us in art journaling, it's good to have a different brush because the acrylic is a little like rougher on your brushes and these kind of hold up to it better. And I like to keep my different mediums separate so that my watercolor brush does what I expect it to do when I'm painting watercolor. So That's I'm glad that you know. threw that in. Okay, I'm going to reach down and get my ruler because I forgot to put it on the table. And we'll start out by trimming out our cute lady. I love collecting photos. Um, from like thrift stores and whatever and just giving them new life. I don't know her name and I don't um, um, know her family or anything. I just loved this photo and I just like imagining like what kind of lady she was, you know? So it's kind of fun to make up stories for photos of unknown origins. Based off the title, I'm gonna go ahead and assume her name is Sunshine. I like that. So I'm just using a ruler and an X-Acto. If you find scissors easier, then you can totally do that. There's no rules. I just am handy with an X-Acto. I've had some practice. So if you're not as handy, it will come. Just keep practicing. But these straight lines are pretty, pretty easy with a ruler anyway. All right. Okay, so we got that. And we might as well cut out these other two pieces while we're at it. Well, this blue anyway. I'm just going to cut a little smidge there. I think I already cut that far up there, so now I'm just going to come across. Did I get it? Yeah. Okay. So there's just like a little bit on there that's not blue that I'm going to trim off. When it's little like this, it gets a little tricky. All right, there we go. I like to go just beyond the part that I'm trimming off so I don't risk getting more of that image on the spot that I don't want. Okay, and then this right here is actually tape. So 
you got an assortment of washi tape in your box. If you don't have this one, you can use a different one. I think all of them would look really cute on here. So the green and the yellow will just make whatever you use pop, but I'm gonna use this one. And we'll do that probably right at the end. Okay, so let's get some color on our postcard. Next, I'm going to mix this vibrant turquoise. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> Think about it. That's such a good color. It is. It's really pretty on its own. But we're going to mix it with some yellow and make it that green color. And I'm going to let my brush just get some of that water off and get some yellow. I'm going to start just putting some paint on this side. And I don't have it like full, like viscosity. I've got it watered down just a little bit um, so that I can blend it. And I'm okay if I don't like get all the spots because I kind of like some of that um, negative space showing. I had to remember what negative space was called. You know, when my brush hits my paint, then all of a sudden it's like hard for me to talk. <laughs> Create mode, engaged. Yeah, it's like it's switched over. I have, speaking of that nice turquoise color, mm -hmm. I have an eternal argument in my head whether I love purple or turquoise more, and some days I'm so sure, man, some days I'm not. Today I don't know, because I love that turquoise. Right? It's like, psh, purple, get out of here. This is the color. But how good is like a deep blue purple, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm a fan of that. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit more yellow right here, because I want to be able to blend that green into it. So I'm going to rinse my brush, get some of that water off, and now I'm going to mix that vibrant turquoise with the lemon zest to get our green. Oh yeah, it's a good green. You see that okay? Yeah, Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to put that here because I kind of want those edges to be darker. And I've got just a little bit more paint on my brush than I want, so I'm just going to add a little water. And you can, you can have fun with that, especially with this watercolor paper that our postcard is on. And you can always add more paint. So you can start out light and build it up. It's harder to take away paint when it's acrylic. So that's, that's what I recommend. Starting out light and building up the paint. I know sometimes if you mess up in watercolor, you can use a magic eraser. Is acrylic like that at all or no? No. It's just, you it's can, what it is. Well, you can cover it up though. You can keep layering. So okay. it's like a different solution. Different fix. So we don't have to worry. It's all going to be good either way. We just go about it different. And it's just paper anyway. So. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, that's a good, it's a good call out. This is kind of a hybrid because we're using it watered down. It kind of looks like watercolor, but it doesn't. It doesn't, uh, I mean, you can even try to get some blooms with this, like if it's light enough, but it doesn't respond the same way that watercolor does. I'm thinking maybe if you feel like you messed up irreparably, you could paint it on another piece of paper and just glue that postcard to the back for the stamp and the address, right? Oh yeah, totally. Or you could gesso it and start over like we- Oh, dang, that is so much better. Yep, good idea. We, well, it's not better, it's a different solution. I like all of the <laughs> solutions. Sometimes in my art journal, I'll just glue two pieces of paper together and like move on. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, no, just so it will be a kind of a fun thing to do here. So it just all depends on what you're, what you're doing there. I just wanted to darken these edges just to give it a little, a little te texture feel. I don't know, Both I just like room. it. I don't know why, I just like it. <laughs> Hold darker edges. Maybe it feels more aged or weathered like that. It's a vignette. Yeah. That's the word, vignette. Okay, I'm liking that. See, we got a bloom, you see? Did you see that? It's beautiful. So yeah, you can get some texture in there with watercolor and acrylic, it's just different. All right, so we'll let this dry for a minute. It's the hardest thing about art is waiting for paint to dry. So you could get a snack, you could do whatever, and we'll be right back. <laughs> This is looking dry, feeling dry. I think we're ready to do the next step. And if your paper warps, it's fine. It's just got character now, right? Yeah. You can kind of bend it back if you want. 
People pay extra for that. Yeah, they pay extra for that human element. <laughs> A machine did not make this. All right. All right, so our next step is going to, well, I'm going to throw stuff. Um, this gel medium. Now, I meant to lay out another brush. Um, you can use that um, white um, brush that I recommended for gesso and stuff, but it will give you a texture, and I didn't bring it with me to show you what I'm talking about. Which brush do you have in your hand? What is that? This one is a half inch oval mop, and I have struggled to say oval mop, so I would say Movil, and it got weird, so then we just named her Mavis because it was easier for me to say. That's <laughs> so this is Mavis. <laughs> That's good. So you can dedicate a Mavis for this, and it could be your gel medium gesso brush if you want a lighter um, touch to it. Or you can just make sure you wash it right after. Because it, if it gets in the fibers of your brush and stays there and dries, then your brush won't have the flexibility that it once did. And we want Mavis to be flexible. She wants to be flexible. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're gonna use for the gel medium this time. Um, because, what did I do with my lady? What, she was just here. Uh, did I drop her? <laughs> I cut her out. Sunshine, where are you? Sunshine. Okay, like for real though? Sometimes, this is like, yes, was it on the floor? Oh my goodness, okay. All right, so that's kind of the placement that I want for her. Like, I want to have some edges and I want to have a little bit more room at the bottom so we can do a little, you know, flourishy whatever business. Okay, so I'm gonna flip sunshine over. I'm gonna make sure there's no water here because this is just collage paper. If it gets wet, it might change it. Okay, so I'm gonna put gel medium on the back. And you need, a, if, so you're used to using Yes Paste because we frequently use that. You're gonna need a little bit more of gel medium than when you do with Yes Paste because Yes Paste is like sticky and thicker and this is not as sticky or as thick. For us uneducated people, mm -hmm. what, uh, what's the benefit of the gel medium over the Yes Paste? Okay, so gel medium has a couple of different purposes. I'm glad you asked. Gel medium um, can be a used with um, acrylic paint. So whatever we water down the acrylic paint, it actually like disperses the pigment and it changes the integrity of the paint a little, which in this case we're okay, we're, we're okay with. But there are times when you want to kind of water down your paint without it losing its viscosity, the okay. thickness of yeah. it. So gel medium is for that, but uh, this soft gel matte medium is also really great for um, sealing things. So we can put it right over the top of our photo and it kind of glues and seals at the same time. And some of my other projects that I've done, I've used gel medium and we actually painted on top of that. So the clear over the top and then you can actually add more stuff without it changing the integrity of your image underneath. Now, if you're really rough with it or you add water to this, then it may um, mess up your photo. So I just think a light hand over the top with this brush for what we're doing is good. So it didn't, it, our ink didn't move around. Now, if you add a lot of water to the gel medium and you um, get crazy, it may, you know, what happens when you wet a photo and the, pe the ink moves around, especially if it's like an inkjet or something. Did I answer your question? It was perfect. Okay. Okay, now we can do this little strip. This I just like the texture of this. It's kind of like cloth or something. Okay, so I rinsed my brush thinking I was done, <laughs> but I'm not. Okay, I got more questions All about right. this. Why, in what situation would you use Yes Paste over this? This seems better in every way. Well, I think Yes Paste is easy to work with and it has a longer drying time. Okay. So that's nice because you can like do it like you can put it on and then you're like, oh, actually I don't like it there. You can still shift it, which when you're doing something intricate is really nice. And it's not 
bad on your brushes because it's water soluble, soluble you can um, get crazy with it. It's not going to be a problem. It doesn't dry out. Like, well, it does. It can dry out, but you just add water back to it, and it's That's reconstituted. Bad. So there are a lot of things I really like about it that way. Is it easier to find, or is gel the gel medium pretty easy to find too? Um, they're both easy to find. I think that it's easier for us to decant the yes paste into a small amount for people to use and have it on hand when they're doing projects and carry around when you're taking your art journal places where gel medium is not because okay. if you like pour it out into a smaller thing it might dry up and then you can't reconstitute it but um so there's 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 pros and cons there for that for sure um but for this gel medium is perfect okay. um, but you could use yes paste for this um because we're not painting over the top of that and it would probably be fine did I? I didn't. I didn't cut out Hello Sunshine. That's okay, because then we can let that dry while I do that. That was totally on purpose. Yep. There it is. <laughs> Half my studio time is like looking for things, even though I just put it right there. All right. Like I said, you can totally use the scissors for this. It's no big deal. I just happen to have an exacto. Kind of keep that up there. So okay. Yeah, and the, just like paint, like when you dispense your gel medium onto a palette like this, it dries and then you can't use it again. So that's why I only put it all a little bit at a time so I can conserve my gel medium. You asked some really good questions. I didn't even think to answer those. I try to be forward thinking about what people will ask in the comments. <laughs> yeah. And just address them in the tutorial. Good. All right. I kind of thought it was fun to do this like off center, but if you are like more of a symmetrical type of personality and you like that, you do you. Okay. That's totally fine. Whichever you want to do, it's going to be great. It's going to look great. Like I said, you can paint something totally different for our friend Judy. I just think it'll be so exciting for her to get all of this happiness in the meal. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna save the this part for after because this is still a little wet and I don't know if the washi tape will stick to that. So we'll have fun kind of with our little flourishes for a minute and then we'll come back to the washi tape. Okay, make sure my, wa my brush is clean. Ooh. And we'll do, we'll do this little leaf part next. Okay, so I need to mix a little more turquoise and lemon zest to get that green. And I kind of want that green to be a little darker, so I'm gonna put a little bit more turquoise in there. Yeah, I'm liking that. And the round brush can do the work for us. So if you're nervous about this, you can practice. But I'm just gonna show you how, if you just see how the tip of that brush is a little bit tapered. Yes. If you put it down like that, you're gonna get sort of a leaf shape, and then you can just pick up, and then it gives you the bottom leaf shape, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. I got that one a little crazy, but that's all right. I'm gonna do another one right here. And I've noticed in plants, and Michael knows more about plants than I do, that the end one is usually smaller because that's like new growth or something, it's right? It's called a meristem. <gasps> that's what it's called? I never well, it's knew. The the axial bud off the meristem. I don't know. I'm just making a fool of myself. But I love it. The smallest because they're the newest. Cool. So yeah, if you want the tip of the little thing that we're doing to be smaller, that will help. This guy's like a little bit bigger, so he maybe he was the first one. And now I'll just kind of make a little branch to connect the leaves that I made. We getting that on the side cam, we can see that, okay. And then I kind of think it's cool to have it meander because I feel like that's what plants do. They kind of do their, find their path of least resistance, right, to where they want to grow. Me too, buddy. Me too. Okay, and I want a little, little bit darker green going into this so I'll have more contrast. So I'm gonna just probably mix a tiny bit of that 
green into my turquoise. Then I'm going to come back in. And you can just have it meander up however you want. You can even add some more leaves there. It's all good. I think I do want to make another leaf like right there. So I'm just pressing it down to get the shape and then lifting it up. And you just remember you can move your paper to what feels good. Sometimes I try to get my, my hand in a weird spot when if I just move my paper it would be better. So just your friendly reminder that you can move your paper. I, I don't want to call her lazy Susan. Those efficient Susan cutting mats. Yes, I have one. Those are awesome. Yeah, and I thought that could be cool for our journaling, and then I just don't do it. I should try it. Okay. Yeah, so however your flourish ends up, that's fine. Now I'm just going to come back and add, I, since I have this color in my brush, I'm going to just darken that edge a little bit just for fun. And I kind of like to have it come across. You know how like if a piece of paper has been through something, cause sometimes the edges just are a little worn. I'm gonna do that across here too. Just a little, just a little touch, I like that. Okay, and now we're gonna do the white dots, then we'll add our washi tape and we'll be done. I mean, this is an easy, quick, Project for sure. Easy, quick, fulfilling. Yeah. I mean, we're going to send out sunshine. Good sunshine art vibes. Feels good to make it. Feels good to give it. Okay. So just got a little white. You all know I love dots. <laughs> just a couple of dots really just goes a long way with me. Okay, while you're dotting, I'm mm -hmm. still obsessed with this gel media stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you did like a big wash over the front, and that essentially seals it, kind of waterproofs it. Mm -hmm. Could you, once you do the writing on the back of the card, do the same thing, and the entire card would be kind of waterproof? Yeah, it could seal it. Um, if you use a pen that's water-soluble, it might disturb your pen. So you'd want to use an ink pen, for okay. sure, like an actual ink pen. But that, that's a good... Do you think it'd be beneficial to seal the back, or do you think the post office is pretty good about stuff? You know, I haven't really thought about it. So I like that you're bringing these things up. That okay. could be cool. I've seen some of the postcards, like, they actually put it in a plastic sleeve and mail it like that. Mm. Um, I kind of like whatever happens to it. Like, I think it gives it a sense of history and, like, it's been through something. Like, More character. Yeah. So I'm okay with it, but, like, I like the idea of trying that out. So if you guys try that out. Let me know. Or I could try it out. Let's see. So I kind of like the idea of some of these dots going off the edge. I got a little bit of, I want that to show up a little bit more. I'm gonna get some more paint. I had more water on my brush and so it was a little translucent, but I want it to be thicker because this yellow needs it to be more white to have the contrast. A little bit more. Right you just kind of choosing like gut feeling where you want these to go, or did you both corners? What's going on here? Yeah, yeah. I thought that this corner and that corner could balance each other out. Okay. And I really like to work in threes and fives and sevens because that's kind of a nice balance number. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We might need a seven, no, a seven over here. We'll have this one coming off the edge. Your prime number, lady. Yeah, I, I, it's aesthetically pleasing to use odd numbers. One, two, three, four. You can do one right there. I hadn't thought to explain that. I love your questions. All right, you guys, I think we're almost done. We're gonna put our washi tape on. And if you want it to have a straight, like straight, straight edge, you can cut it with your scissors. It's a little cold here, so this is like really. She's saying a little cold. It's nine degrees outside in case you're curious. <laughs> yeah, and it's. It's worse than a little cold. Yeah. And so the tape, the tape is, is having a struggle. 
Me too, buddy. <laughs> That's okay. We'll get it. We'll get it. If this happens to you in cold weather, you can try to warm it up. Like, I have a heat gun. I could warm it up. Okay, I think we're getting it. Just put it in your armpit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that about the length I want? Maybe just a little bit more. That tape reminds me of frog skin. Oh, yeah. Um, my kids love that Octonauts creature report. Like, have you ever seen that? I've seen show? Octonauts, yeah. So they do that creature report, and they just watched one that had a frog that was like red at the top, and then it had blue legs, and I was like, that can't be real. That's so cool. So I want to see a frog that has dots like this. Do you have a creature report for me? No, <laughs> that you can show me this frog? Uh, it's funny you're talking about octonauts. We had friends come visit a while ago who don't have children, and we have three. Mm -hmm. And so Sarah and I were talking just casually at dinner about our favorite recent Disney movies. And we asked my friend Eric, I'm like, what's yours? He's like, I don't watch Disney movies. I'm 30. <laughs> and that just hit me that, yeah, that's funny. You wouldn't, yeah. if you didn't have kids, you probably wouldn't watch any of these kids shows. Yeah, so maybe my mentioning Octonauts might have been a little exclusive to some of you guys. I'm really sorry, but it's a cute show. If no, you it is a cute one. Have a little friend around that you want to entertain. <laughs> okay, we did it. We made it. It's all done. It's beautiful. And if yours is doing this kind of situation, you can just put it under a book and it will flatten it out before you mill it if you want to do that. Could you iron it? Um, or would that be a poor idea with all the gel stuff? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's, experiment. Yeah. <laughs> we should experiment with that. Um, thanks so much for painting with us and being here and making something to put good vibes out in the world. I, I love Let's Make Art Matter and I love um, getting to paint with you and we love to see your work. So if you made something like this, I want to see it. If you went rogue, I want to see that too. Um, you can share your artwork on our um, community Facebook group that's Let's Make Art Journals or if you like Instagram and you want to show us there, you can use the hashtag Let's Make Art Journals. Thanks so much for being here and we'll see you next time.